Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and happy Friday. All right, so today, a couple things. Today's going to be a vlog and I'm um I started cutting my uh, rayon fabrics out and sewing them up and I have three of the fabrics that I um I'm kind of walking you through today, um, but four garments. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm showing you like little odds and ends for each of them. So this is three days worth of vlogging, I think. I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think that's right. <laughs> Um, that you're gonna see. But I've decided to do the Rayon vlog and break it into at least two parts. Um, so this is gonna be part one, and then um, if there's any technique that you struggle with with Rayon fabrics, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and show whatever that is in part two of the Rayon series. Um, be making a few more, um, a shirt dress, some um, more sundresses, a couple tops. So I do have, you know, kind of a lot of stuff different types of garments that are going to be being made. Um, so yeah, leave those down below and I will get to those as soon as possible. But today is Friday, which means it is the Love Notions Feature Friday. And today's pattern is the Pemberley Top Tunic and Dress. It is a wonderful knit pattern on pure waist. I have not made one yet, but um, there are some really cool versions that are out there. It is $5 today only, which is very exciting. So if that is one you've had your eye on, definitely want to go grab that today. As always, you can use my Tomcat 10 code to get an additional 10% off that uh, $5 pattern. So it makes it $4.50, which is great. <laughs> okay, um, also, before we get to the actual vlog, I don't want this to be too terribly long, Tuesday's video. So Sunday, I have the tutorial for how I added darts to this. I'm wearing my uh, new Pattern Emporium Pleats to Meet You um, dress, and you guys are gonna see more, a little more of this on the channel here, or on the video here in just a second. But um, my tutorial on how I added darts to a bodice where there were no darts. I did a full bust adjustment and added darts to a bodice where there wasn't any. Um, I'm showing that on Sunday. So definitely, if that's something you're interested in, you want to, uh, check back in on Sunday for that. Tuesday, I'm gonna kinda have a mishmash video. I just have a few, I have an exciting announcement to make. I have um, a cool stitches box that I received and I wanna show you guys what was in that, which is a sewing subscription box that's really fun. Debbie sent me um, one of the boxes and it's, it's a pretty cool one. Um, what else? I just have some odds and ends that I wanna share. So it's gonna be kind of a, a chatty one and a little show and tell and that sort of stuff on Tuesday's video. So as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And um, I will see you guys again on Sunday. Bye. Hi everyone. Okay, I have a new tripod and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> um, it's the little things. I'll see if, I mean, obviously I'm using my phone in it to film so I can't show you um, the tripod, what it looks like. Um, but I'll maybe film it a little bit later and stick one of my kids um, phones in there or something on my husband so that you can kind of see how it's working but it's beautiful and I think it's going to be great for tutorials so um okay this is the first vlog for rayon sewing and I've gone ahead and done um a little well a sizable amount just because I'm working on my daughter's um dress for this quinceanera that she's going to this weekend and so I have made um, the lining of the bodice, I'll show you the pattern here in just a second, the lining of the bodice in linen, um, and I have made the top of the skirt, I guess. So part of this gets attached to the bodice, and then the back is open, I have my zipper tails are still on, and then there's a whole nother section of dress, it's a midi um, length dress that still needs to get attached, but, um, Turn my iron back on because it's Tuesday, but it's almost it's seven o'clock and I was waiting for my new tripod to arrive so I could talk to you guys because um, I really wanted to use it. OK, so I've got my bodice here and I kind of thought with these rayon videos, what I would do is just as things come to me that I would come on and show you, um, you know, what I'm doing. So this is the overlay bodice and we've got these really long ties. So the dress ties up here. Let me show you the. I'll show you the pattern real quick and then we can talk about it. Okay, so this is obviously my computer. <laughs> I could get fancy and do some screen recording, but I actually haven't figured that out on this new computer of mine. Anyway, um, I'll show you it on a person, but you can see, um, I'll use my little cursor here, 
you've got the pleating fabric that um, is the bodice, and then it kind of comes down like so, um, and then wraps around the back. So this back part here covers the bra, um, but then it leaves kind of the back and kind of around to the front open a little bit. So kind of kind of that cutout trend. And then there's the seam here and the bottom part of the, the dress, which I don't have attached yet. Um, and here it is on this lady. So you see how it kind of gives like the little cutout in the front um, that she was excited about. So um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. And um, yeah, to kind of give you an idea. And I, these are the ties. So it ties up here at the um, um, shoulder. Okay, so I have, so this overlay part, because it gets cut on the bias. This is like all a bunch of crazy strings. Um, with a lot of pleating. <laughs> um, anyway, so it'll get pulled taut and it does get sewn to the top of that lining piece I showed you. There's the back, but we've got these long um, straps that or ties that get tied at the shoulder that I'm working on right now. And I thought if you've never seen, um, I mean, maybe you guys have ways that you turn your loops or turn like straps and stuff like that, but I thought I would just show you what I do and the method that I use. So, um, I will pull it down so you can see really, really well. But what I've done, I just have one more strap to do. And um, I've sewn my strap right sides together. I've closed off the one end and I've trimmed my seam allowance so that I can get nice sharp um, corners. And then obviously the other end is open because it gets turned. Now, if I'm doing a strap that can be, it, where I'm just sewing down one long side but both ends are um, uh, open, I usually will go ahead and sew one end close. It's just easier to turn that way. And then I'll just cut it off once um, I've turned everything right side together. So, you know, kind of do what you want though. Um, so I've got my, my um, long strap here and I have a pencil that has not never been sharpened. So a unsharpened pencil, very sophisticated tool here. Um, so yeah, let me switch you around and I'll show you how I do this. Very excited about this new tripod. <laughs> okay, so you can see my pretty base. This is for the tripod. That's so pretty. All right, so what we've got here is this really long loop. So what I do, so this is the end that I have um, sewn shut. And I just take this, kind of pull it apart, maybe. Easier said than done. Okay, so yeah, so I'm pulling the sides apart here. And I take my pencil, the eraser side, and I usually, if there's um, a corner, it's just, it helps kind of push that corner out too. I'm just gonna do this, and then I'm gonna pull this over that pencil. And then, sorry, you're out of frame just a little bit. Let's do that. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And then I am just taking and pushing the pencil and kind of pulling this over the pencil. You can press this against, you know, sometimes I have the pencil pressed against my body too. And then once you get here, and again, I do this for all of my straps, including the ones that are even have opened ends on both ends. And I'm just using that eraser. I know it's not a point turner, but you also have to worry about anything um, poking through. Pull the pencil out and then, whoop. And it's just a matter of pulling that out. I mean, obviously some fabrics work better with this than others, but this works great with everything. So now I can go and um, press it really, really well and then attach it. If um, this were something that had two open ends, at this point I would just go and cut off that um, sewn end. I'm gonna sneeze. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> I mean, you lose a little bit of link there, but not a, not a lot. And, you know, that wouldn't be an issue with this piece. So there you go. But this one had a closed ending, end anyway. So there you go. That is how I turn my loops. Okay, so um, tonight I've got, so this pattern, um, that back piece closes with a uh, hook and eye tape that gets sewn in. So I would like to get my straps in and my hook and eye tape, and I've got the little placket here that goes back behind um, one of these 
Sorry, I had these connected because I wanted to make sure I was cutting them the same length. <laughs> so this stuff comes on just tape that's really long of the hooks and the eyes. Um, then you just cut off the section that you need. This is great for uh, corset making, formal dresses, um, and this dress. <laughs> and then I've got my little placket. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly um, get, all, not really quickly, but I am going to go ahead and get that done. And then I will show you where I am for this evening. I really haven't done anything so far that I feel like you guys are missing. Um, I will say that this rayon, this See You at Six rayon, I got this from June and Lou, um, is really nice. It is not thick, but it's got more body than a lot of other um, like rayon chalets. And so it doesn't get, you know, off grain or get out of shape as easily as some. So I highly recommend this jersey or this jersey, this uh, viscose or rayon, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, for the other ones, though, I think I've got, you know, I'm going to do a dartless bodice and put a dart in it for one of them. Um, we'll talk about stay stitching necklines and how not to stretch those out. Um, so I will do that in other uh, rayon videos going forward. And again, this may get, you know, hacked into like a part one, part two. So, okay, I'm going to get to sewing and I'll be back. Okay, guys, it is 930 and I have finished the dress except for some hand sewing. So, um, this is kind of, I mean, this was a little tricky one. So I, I still need to hand sew. These ties are also very long. I need to hand sew the um, lining and the front here in between the hooks so that then this gets pulled over. And she will have a bra on underneath this, but this gets closed with hook and eyes, which I thought was kind of fun. That little bustier top I made for her closed with a separating zipper, but I think that this is fun. So it'll close like so once I've done all of that. But I have done a full bust adjustment on this. Um, okay, so let me, this is not gonna fit me. Um, so I've done a full bust adjustment. Um, I think it will pull taut. There is elastic that you can see right here. So I think that will help hug it to the body, you know, under, under here when she's got it on. And then I added, so the back here has um, these pleats and then it's got a facing that finishes off that edge. And I actually sewed clear elastic into the seam when I put the um, facing on to help that hug the body. So I just pulled it so ever so slightly. So it does gather in a little bit, but I think that will help number one, support the weight of the skirt so it keeps it up at her weight and it's not just hanging from that front part, but also um, just keep it snug up against her waist. Then there's a center back zipper that's in here, right there. Obviously it goes down much further than that. <laughs> so, here. Invisible zipper for the back. Um, this was a fun pattern to make because it was so different. I actually had to pay attention, like really pay attention to the um, instructions. So um, again, I did do, I'll talk about this dress more like once I've got her like in it and I'll show it to you guys. Um, but I did do a full bust adjustment and then I also raised the neckline by an inch and a half because it was pretty like low cut. So we raised that up um, and it's got these very long, you know, ties that will tie that up. So, and it's pretty long. I think it might end up being a maxi on her because there's this extra little tear here um, or like T length maybe. Anyway, I'll put it on her tomorrow um, to check fit. I'm actually not going to be here this weekend when she's going to need to wear this. I'm going to go see a friend. So um, anyway, hopefully all fits well. But I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to finish it up by hand sewing, which shouldn't take me too long, just this side here. Go watch America's Got Talent with my husband. <laughs> and sew that up there. And uh, yeah. Okay, so tomorrow... Um, so. This one was a lot of fun. There wasn't really a lot to show you guys um, because there were so many atypical, not really atypical techniques, but you know, like the elastic under the bust and stuff like that. I was really having to concentrate um, since this is the first time I've made this, but she loves it. She hasn't put it on yet. Um, we did test the bodice. That's the other thing. Sorry, God, ADD brain is bad tonight. Um, I made up the bodice first and I made it in linen. Um, cause I wanted the structure 
technically this this pattern is not meant for rayon it's meant for like more structured fabrics so i made the lining in a linen uh and we tried that on and actually that's i ended up um undoing the side seams of the the top and remaking the front piece this piece um so that i could raise that neckline i'd already done the full bust adjustment but i did go back and do that um so hopefully that works um I also did linen for the facings just to give that a little bit more stability. And I did the pocket. There's pockets in this. I did the pockets in the linen. Um, so one, there's like a facing, like a piece of of the fabric goes in the way it's drafted, um, which is very nice. So I wasn't worried about being able to see the white linen. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna work really, really well. And then she can throw her phone or whatever in there. And she requested the pockets. I asked her if she wanted them. She's like, yes. <laughs> so there we have it. This is the Vicky Sews Francesca. It's the first Vicky Sews pattern I've ever made. Um, and it was really interesting. Uh, I feel like a lot of her patterns are very um, like trendy and um, fashion forward and all that kind of stuff, which is great for my daughter and her aesthetic. There's a lot on there that I think sh she would enjoy um, having me make. Um, so yeah, I would definitely give it a try um, and try and make another one. So it's always fun when we find new pattern companies that we like um, and her stuff's interesting. And um, yeah, it was a fun sew. <laughs> okay, so there we've got, so fingers crossed this fits well. Um, I don't have to do any or too many tweaks. And uh, I will show it to you guys on her body here soon. Okay, tomorrow, I think um, the fabric, I have two Minerva fabrics that I really need to get sewn up this week. What is tomorrow? Wednesday. Um, but I also already have the fabric that I made my salt whistle out of. <coughs> Excuse me. I went ahead and cut out my Harmony and my Sky Shorts out of that because that's why I had bought that fabric. And I had, an, I had just enough to do all three. Um, but they're already cut out. And I hate leaving rayon too long, not sewn, because it will grow even if it's just sitting there. Um, so I may go ahead and do that tomorrow. And I still need to wash my Minerva fabric. So um, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. And maybe I can even get the two that I need to get sewn up. <clears throat> for Minerva. Maybe get those cut out tomorrow. So, um, oh, and then I could go ahead and film the tutorial for Sunday. That's going to be adding the dart to the Meet You There tear dress. So yeah, I think that'll be tomorrow. Okay. I <laughs> hope you guys um, have enjoyed the little bit that um, I've done today and I will see you again tomorrow. Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, oh, what is happening with my hair? I tell you, it's super hot here as I know that it is pretty much around the country as well as the Northern hemisphere. <laughs> I know that everyone's having like these really weird, crazy, um, heat things. <sighs> Environmental changing, global warming, all that. Anyway, um, so, so I was just letting my hair, like I put some gel in it after I washed it to let it just kind of go curly or wavy. It's not even really curly. Ugh, I don't even know what's going on now. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's noon already. Um, I'm just very, very tired. Um, a little dizzy for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, finished my daughter's dress last night. Uh, and I don't think I mentioned on the channel yet, but my, um, and I know I've talked about Joyce before on the channel, my sewing mentor, but, um, she unfortunately passed away on July 7th. And uh, we had the, um, or they had the funeral for her on Monday this week. So I think I'm still processing like a lot of that. Um, okay, so for today, um, I am going to work on, I think the, I'm sorry, I'm looking down at it right here. Uh, the Harmony, the Love Notions Harmony and the uh, Peppermint Magazine Sky Shorts. So I've got them both. I cut them out when I cut out my Salt Whistle uh, dress. So that whole three meters of fabric went to that. Um, did I mention? Yeah, I mentioned I finished my daughter's dress last night. She's going to try that on at some point today. She's got a friend over um, here for right now. But um, anyway, I have all that yardage of, of rayon. I finally gotten the stuff that needed to be washed still is washing today. Um, and I've printed out the pleats or the meet you there to your dress. Um, 
so that I can film that little tutorial. I'm going to do just a, a small full bust adjustment. I was looking at the instructions on that and it says that um, most of her full busted testers that usually would have to do a full bust adjustment didn't on that pattern. But I still think I'd like to have a dart. So I'm going to do a small one, just a small one. Um, and I will show you guys how to do that. That'll be Sunday's video. So trying to think today, I think I might show you how I do my stay stitching on rayon. I know that that can be an issue with a lot of people. Um, so yeah, let's just get these sky shorts. I'm excited to, to get these, um, figured out. And I'm also, the sky shorts have almost a circle hem leg. They're very wide legged. And I think I'm going to do a roll hem on my serger. Um, and I'll show you guys how I do that. I know that not everyone has sergers. Um, I know that and I think, I'm pretty sure most sergers can do a rolled hem function. My serger is also a cover stitch machine, although I hardly ever use the cover stitch function anymore because I've got my dedicated cover stitch right there. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd show how to do that as well. So those are kind of the two things I thought I would show you guys today. And I may just do both of those on the sky shorts. <laughs> um, so I'll whip up the harmony real quick and then I can show you those things on the sky shorts. So stay tuned. Okay. Oh, you can see my pretty base for my tripod there. This, the camera's literally like wrapped around the sewing machine. This is just very exciting, folks. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you guys how I like to do my stay stitching. I have got my, um, these are the sky shorts, and I have uh, the fronts um, right here. So here is the waistband. I've got it interfaced for the pockets, and I'm just going to really quickly um, stay stitch here checking to see my seam allowance stay stitch um my waistband because it's a flat waistband on the front and then it's a um uh, elastic in the back okay so side seam right here with my pocket center front here we want to go from the side seam to the center front on both pieces so if you were doing a skirt or a neckline you want to sew from the outside and sew in towards the inside and then go from the other side and, and sew to the center. This helps to keep from stretching things out. I had a lot of people that said, you know, oh my, I find that my sewing machine, I stay stitch and it's the one that's doing the stretching out and that sort of thing. This is going to help that. So you always want to start from the outside. My seam allowance here is um, five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go just short of that like j literally just shy so five eighths of an inch is right here and I'm sewing like right there um go ahead and get that started and what I'm gonna do I really am careful not to stretch this out so as this is sewing I am kind of you see how I'm kind of pushing it's bubbling up a little bit but I'm just going slow and I'm really trying not to distort anything so I want to follow the line because there is a curve to the waistband. And I'm just gently, you know, turning the fabric. I'm trying not to straighten anything out, just kind of turning it. And then when I get to the edge, we'll backstitch. Just like that. And that is going to do um, a few things. So if this were a neckline or a skirt, I would have sewn from here to here, and then I would have flipped it over and sewn from here to the center. So you do it in two passes. Um, and then I would have done the same with the back. That's gonna help keep things nice and um, stable, and the stay stitching is gonna do its job. So you just have to be very careful um, you know, using your hands to just very carefully move it around without stretching or distorting anything. So that is how I do my stay stitching. So I'm going to continue stay stitching here. Um, and again, this is on all of my rayon. This is what I do. And when I come back, I will show you, I'm going to um, roll hem on my serger, both the hem of these shorts and the hem of my harmony. So I'm going to show you how I do that next. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I switch my serger over to a rolled hem. Um, we are going to actually be doing the hem of my um, Harmony because I am letting my shorts uh, hang on the bias because that is a circle hem and um, I think they need to fall a little bit. And I think I want to take them up a little um, in length. So I am going to be um, waiting till, till, I'll just wait till overnight. I'll do that tomorrow. So. I'm going to show you, I'm going to do the same thing with this. 
uh, hem on this harmony that I am doing on the shorts. So everything should be the same. Okay, so hopefully you can see all of this fine. So I have taken out, um, I only have one needle in. I almost always keep it on four thread serging. Let me try and get in tight here. Okay, so I just have the one needle in. Um, I've already pulled my loopers through. I just tied those onto the color um, that was already there. So those that's the, the two threads that are pulled through here. And those are set up just, you know, for regular serging. Um, and I've got my third that is up here. So I only have um, needle two in its position, overlock needle two. So I'm just going to actually just really quickly thread this while on camera. And then I have to change the setting just a bit. Okay, so we're just going to thread this. Sorry, I keep getting interrupted. <laughs> School needs to start back up. Okay. All right. So I've got my um, one needle, and this is the... Um, second position. So the far right, my far right needle is in. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is this is my, um, uh, this is stitch width. Yes, this is stitch width. And I want to keep that at like a 3.5. M is just usually a good one to keep it at, but we'll go to 3.5. And then down here, which you can't see, there it is. <laughs> this knob down here, um, that I normally, this is my stitch length. So this is width, this is length, and I'm going to go to a, um, if I go all the way around the horn, these numbers that are in the box are the rolled hem numbers. And so I want this, I mean, depending on the type of rolled hem, I like mine a little bit more compact, so it's hard to see, but I, there's like a little notch here and I'm going to put that at, I don't know, like a point. I don't know, like a little over one. And um, yeah, so I've got that. And then over here, where I've got these stitches here, I keep this on overlock. But then over here, um, I'm going to switch this down to a um, D, which this is what I do for the rolled. It goes here at A for regular um, overlocking. And that's everything. Okay? So, I mean, I realize that Sergers can all be different, but, and again, mine does go to a cover stitch as well, but I don't think that's, that's not a function of the cover stitch. That's all serger stuff that I was messing with. Okay. So now I can close everything up. And what I'm going to do, if you watch the buttonhole, the knit buttonhole tutorial on Sunday, I have strips of water soluble, I have a hard time saying that word, soluble, um, Stabilizer, which you can find in the um, embroidery section. Actually, usually like at Joann's, it's with the um, interfacing and stuff like that. I know you can buy them by the roll, but you can also, I think you can find it um, like by the yard, like on a bolt. And I actually have a bolt. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to lay my water soluble, sol soluble, what? <laughs> my stabilizer on top of my um, shirt here. And I'm just going to be running kind of the cut edge right along this line here. So I will be, I want to cut some off just to clean it up a little bit, but I'm going to put this on top of it. And it's just going to make for a really nice rolled hem. Lower my presser foot and find my pedal, which is missing. There it is. Oh, Okay, and then we're just going to go around the horn. Now, a lot of times I only use um, like neutral colored threads. However, with a rolled hem, you want something that coordinates or matches. 
I actually have serger thread colored that I don't have a lot of colored serger threads, but um, I do have this. It's actually a variegated that I bought right when I first got my serger when I was playing around with stuff. This also goes much slower, but you can see this beautiful rolled hem that it's creating. So we're just going to go all the way. Now I could make that a little bit more compact if I wanted to get those stitches in like closer than they are. Um, and that would be the stitch length that I'd be messing around with, which is the second knob down here. Um, but I think, I think that's fine. I think that's going to be really good. This, oh my gosh. I also want to make sure you're not rolling stuff up on itself. This is also really great. We use this stitch a ton for um, polyester bridesmaid, which all bridesmaids dresses are polyester, um, and prom dresses where there was lots of chiffon. Polyester chiffon is an absolute nightmare to him. And we use this all the time when I was in the bridal workroom, especially for bridesmaids dresses because the bridesmaids, well, in prom, um, no one really cared that there was a rolled hem. Now, I don't think that the gal I worked for would have done that on a bride, like an actual wedding dress. Um, maybe, though, depending on what was there from the factory. But this works great if you're messing around with any alterations for polyester chiffon hems that are a nightmare because they are shifty. And this actually gives a little bit of weight to the polyester and um, keeps it from, so polyester has what they call the polyester jump. So uh, when you cut it, it will shrink more than, because the weight, when the weight lifts, it will um, pull up a lot shorter usually than you mean to. You have to be very careful. It's cutting chiffon hems is kind of like cutting uh, bangs. You just want to go a little by little. But the rolled hem kind of helps give weight to those hems again. Um, so you may not have that kind of issue. So notice as I get through one little strip, I'm just grabbing another one. Some of this was actually a leftover from the buttonhole day. That's why they're kind of thicker. I didn't really have a big enough piece to cut it into three. So we just have two big pieces. Um, another thing that I wanted to say, when you're using the um, water-soluble um, stuff, and, you know, like I'm going to be tearing away quite a bit of this, you can save all of your scraps slash trash, and um, when you are ready to, I don't know, if you're working with something really slinky, like a silk, like a charmeuse or something, you can um, put a lot of the water-soluble scraps into a bucket with water so that they, um, hold on, we're coming around the horn here, so that they dissolve and then put your fabric in there and it will act as a stabilizer for the entire piece of fabric. It's similar to that gelatin trick that you see people do to help stabilize their um slinky fabrics and then it can be washed out later okay i've just trimmed my um threads because we're coming around to the front so we're just gonna keep going and you can see here before i hit this off see how it's rolling it's it is rolling the um fabric under and hemming it but then wrapping it in thread as well so you just get a really beautiful clean little narrow hem here and it's fun to play around with with colored um, threads. Okay, so when I come back around, I am going to sew right, I don't know, for just a couple, like an inch maybe. And then I'm just going to pull it off. Now, you can thread, the, you know, cut this, put it on a needle and thread it back through if you want. Um, actually, let's do that. To say your other option, your other option is to um, just cut it 
right where you ended and put fray check there. Okay, so once we are finished, before we do anything with our tail, now you're just gonna go and you literally are just pulling this off. And it just tears and it's lovely. And it should tear right at that line of stitching. There are also, um, in fact, I may have some. I took like a surgery class when I got my surgery, but that's been so long ago now. Um, some feet where you can feed uh, like fishing wire in, not fishing wire, fishing line in to your rolled hem and it gives it like um, stability. So like wire ribbon almost, you know? So if you're wanting something with a real sculptural edge, I've never tried that, but I do know that that foot exists. And again, I may have one. <laughs> okay, so there we go. There's the beautiful little rolled hem edge on the edge of my Harmony. Okay, now to finish off this um, end, I've got a chenille needle here. I'm just going to wrap that around the head, make like a little tiny little bump, that then you can slide into that. Does that work? Nope. Well, I thought about, I have a normal darning needle that I use. I'm going to have to use that for my, ooh, serger threads. I just threw chenille needles everywhere right out of that package. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I may have to just use my regular darning needle. I was just afraid it would be too blunt. And this is an... Uh, I think this is a tapestry needle, maybe. Darning needle. It may be a darning needle. You need a nice big a needle with a big head. Okay. And then once that is done, you can just kind of feed it on back through. See, I was worried that this needle would be too thick just going to go back a little bit. There we go. There we go. So I just fed that through. That's all secure. Now I can cut that off and I'll probably hit that with a little fray check anyway, just to make sure everything stays nice and secure. So I'll just hit that little edge with a little fray check, give it a good press, and we're finished. Okay, so it is three o'clock. It's not very late. I've only been down here sewing for three hours. Um, okay, so I got my Harmony all finished, and there's the beautiful little rolled hem you just watched me do. Um, very happy with that. Put a little button from my stash. I love these kind of tops for just those random buttons that you have, finding one that just matches. So there's the Harmony. And then I have the sky shorts. I tried them on, they're very cute. I have the sky shorts all finished, except for the hem. So I'm gonna let these hang overnight and then I will measure them out tomorrow and I, my machine's still set up for that rolled hem. So I will um, decide how much I wanna cut off, mark that and then roll hem those hems as well. And I am gonna take that up. I think maybe, maybe like an inch and a half. They hit like right above my knee. They just look a little frumpy for what for being shorts. Um, so I think I am gonna take that up about an inch and a half and that would be good. So there we go. That is what I got finished today. Very pleased with that. So um, tomorrow I have all of my rayons now washed and dried. Um, tomorrow I think I'm gonna work on the um, two uh, Minerva fabrics that were gifted to me. So we'll do the Meet You There tier dress and I think I'm changing my mind on the um, cheetah one. I'm not sure. The Cashmere Rat just released their, is it Holyock or Hollyock dress? The button front sundress, which I have been in love with since they released that. So I grabbed it immediately, <laughs> snatched that up immediately. Um, 
And so I think one of my rayon dresses is gonna be that. So something's gonna get the ax, a pattern that I was gonna use. I don't know, that might be good. Cause then I could wear it into the fall and you could layer it over stuff. She had a lot of models that were um, in that dress that she had like layered over t-shirts and stuff. So that could be really cute in the fall and it would go under cardigans really well. So the leopard print might become that. I'm still gonna use the navy floral for the meet you there tiered dress. I'm really excited about that. I think I'm gonna do a shorter dress on that one with the three quarter bishop sleeve, I'm thinking. So <laughs> I have been thinking. Okay, so we've got this fabric is almost completely made up. Just need the hem on those shorts. So I'll do that tomorrow. And then we will move on to the next thing. Okay, um, as things come to me, I will, of course, pop on and share with you what I'm thinking. All right, guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. I need to go do a whole bunch of Tomcat Citry computer work now. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Bye. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Okay, so I just finished filming the pattern work for adding a dart to the bodice for the Meet You There tiered top. Um, so I'm going to make that up today, the Meet You There tiered dress, so that I can have that finished dress in the tutorial on Sunday. But I've got my sky shorts here, and I think, I mean, I think that they've dropped. Look at that kind of wonky hem. So I was just going to show you how I'm going to um, even out my hem. And I'm also going to go ahead and shorten it by an inch and a half. Um, I was kind of trying them on and I think an inch and a half, and I'll just cut that inch and a half off the um, pattern is going to be a good length on me. So what I'm going to do now is um, just true up my shorts real quick and I'm just, I'll show you really quickly how I'm going to do that. Um, and then do the rolled hem that I showed you yesterday on the hem of these. And then we're going to get started on the meet you there to your dress. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it per the instructions. A lot of times when I'm doing like a tiered dress that has gathers, I just use my ruffle foot on my uh, machine and then cut off the extra. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you how I do that. So, okay. So I don't do it per the instructions. The instructions actually have you use clear, clear elastic to gather, um, all the tiers up for the dress, which actually is a really good idea. Um, but I don't know. I just prefer using the ruffle foot and then it finishes everything off really nicely on the inside, but I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay. I think that's all I've got for right now. <laughs> okay. So I am going to, um, show you this and then finish off the hem and then we'll start working on the tiered dress. Okay. All right. So here are my shorts. So what I am doing is, um, move the, I do think I'm going to make another pair of these in that other rayon and do another set. So what I'm doing is the center of your shorts. So here is my center front um, seam, like my uh, the crotch seam that's there. I hate that word. <laughs> anyway, right in the middle of the leg, though, is kind of the um, on grain part. And I'm starting right here at the seam of the waistband and the shorts, measuring down, and that's hitting like right at 16. So that should be the shortest part. It should be on grain and good to go. But I'm wanting to go... Um, an inch and a half shorter. So I'm gonna mark it this at 14 and a half. So I'll be marking everything because I'm taking length off no matter what. And I'm trying to decide, I just got my friction. I got a whole set of friction markers and from Amazon. I just ordered this. What's a good color though? Maybe I'll just do black. Okay, this is a very busy print. <laughs> I wanna be able to see these. So what I'm gonna do is I am literally just gonna be going around the shorts, just like I would for a dress. And um, at that 14 and a half mark, just gonna mark it. And then I'm just gonna go all the way around, measuring from the top down. Now, my inner leg seam here, so if I open this up really well, this should also be on grain, just the way that the pattern is put together. So, this is a little trickier because we don't have like a, a set point, but what I'm going to do is I do want to shorten this an inch and a half. And it is, hopefully I'm still in frame and stuff. I am. <laughs> it is like right at like six inches. So I'm going to come up here to four and a half. Four and a half. 
four and a half. So I am just kind of, um, and I bet it does get like kind of crazy in through here, but now I'm just, maybe I'll do one more four and a half, like right here. And then I'm just going to kind of, um, meet that over here and I'm just making a line again. I'm trimming off a little bit all the way around because I am taking an inch and a half all the way off. Anyway, I'm just going to continue doing that all the way around each leg. Um, and then I will, when I take it over to, um, do the hem that I showed you, I'll do the same way as the, the, um, harmony, but I will cut, use my blade to cut right along this line that I've drawn. So hopefully that is helpful and kind of shows you how I'm evening out the hem of these shorts. Okay, I will be back with um, tiered dress info. Okay, so I have finished with this fabric. I'm gonna dump everything on the floor. So my shorts are done. They're really cute. I'm definitely, I'm gonna make another pair. And I just love that little hem. I don't know if I'll do this um, for the next pair or maybe I'll just do like a little, um, like a Dubias, a bias um, hem, bias tape, like facing on the hem would be really fun. Um, or just like a baby hem, either or. But yeah, these are really cute. I think they'd be really, really comfortable. So I've got that finished and I've got my um, Harmony all finished. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna show you any of these on me, um, except hopefully I can finish that Meet You There to your dress today and then I can um, get some quick twirls in that because I um, think I'm just gonna do like a couple of rayon vlogs like this, this one, and then maybe a part two for the rest of them. And then I'll do a big reveal for everything. Uh, my daughter tried on her dress last night and it's, I mean, we raised the neckline an inch and a half and it's still a little cleavage-tastic, but I mean, it's for a special event. And honestly, the party she's going to this quinceanera, it's all girls. <laughs> um, it's just, it's a, it's a smaller, um, I think some quinceañeras can get like a very big and huge parties, but I think it's just family and like girls. So she's not, um, but you know, they're all dressing up. So I think it's fine. Um, it's not awful, but she does look grown up in it, I guess we could say. Uh, anyway, so she's very excited about that. So um, I will get some footage of her in that. Um, I've got this all finished now. And then I'm getting ready to start on that Minerva. This one for the meet you there to your dress. I love this, it's so beautiful. So that is what I'm going to do next. And then I will probably call it for this vlog because I need to film the intro and then, you know, today's Thursday, I need to get everything um, edited and uploaded uh, for tomorrow morning. So I'll just pick it back up and that'll be the set part two of the vlog for the rayon for the other stuff. So that's the plan. Okay, I am going to um, cut out, iron my fabric, cut it out, start sewing, and then I will show you how I do my um, ruffler on my serger. Okay. Okay, so I've gotten uh, pretty good on the um, Meet You There. I don't know why I struggle with the name of this so much. Dress. So we've got the dress. I doubled up on my yoke too. The pattern only has you cut out one yoke, but I cut out two so that I could do the burrito method. So the, um, I've attached everything at the shoulders. I've done the, the binding, as you can see, I just use self binding, um, and have a pretty decent amount left over, which is exciting. Um, and then I've got it open at the side seams. So I've got the neckline done, open the side seams. I have my, I put darts in it. Um, that video will be up on Sunday on how I did that. And then I have this first tier sewn on. So um, the way that the pattern is, it's got you um, a whole bunch of different lengths. Like there's a shorter top, a longer top, a short mini, a long mini, a knee length, midi, and then maxi. And that all depends on what combination of short tiers and long tiers that you use. And they give you the what the lengths of those should be. And then the width depends on what size that you're making. Now, I've kind of looked at it a little bit. So um, tier one, so the tier that gets attached, so it has like a tier one, two, and three, depending on obviously what length. So the tops have one tier, 
the dresses up to the knee length dress has two tiers and then midi and maxi have three tiers so um for tier one i think for my size it had i needed a strip that was like 30 30 and 7 8 inches or something like that so what i've done is um that length for tier one for me um because for the dress i'm making i'm making the longer mini um, so it'll be just a couple inches above my knee, um, should be, <laughs> um, anyway, I, it's 11 and three quarters is the length of the longer tier. And, um, I just cut one strip of fabric for like one width that, that length. And I, um, so I don't measure out the width, I guess. Yeah. The width, because I let the machine do the gathering. So you can't start with an actual, um, piece. So what I've done is I, I've gathered it into the bodice. So here's the long tier and then the short tier gets um, gathered onto this. And I'm gonna show you how to do the short tier because it's the same. Um, and I will go through and top stitch the seam allowance to these up on both tiers, but I'll, I'll wait and do that in a second. So what I do is I have things connected at the shoulders. I do the first tier, get it gathered with the ruffler on the, um, uh, machine and then I'll do the second one separately front and back and then I'll put in the sleeves and then I'll zip up the side seam um, to the edge of the sleeve so I hope that makes sense so for the second tier on this you need a strip that is eight inches long and um, I have cut three lengths of the width of my fabric eight inches long and I have attached them together I think for this one, I my strips needed to be like 45 and some odd inches long. And you need one for the front, one for the back. So that's around 90 inches. Um, so I've just done three lengths of this, which should be plenty. That should be well over. Yeah, because my fabric is what, 54 wide? So yes, that's way more than I need. So that makes me feel better. But I've gone ahead and put all the three strips together into one really, really long strip. That way, if I go over a strip... Um, I can play around with the third strip and um, it just gets gathered in and you can't even see the seams when it gets gathered in. So this is just giving myself basically some wiggle room. So what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I do the first tier and then we'll cut the excess off and then you just do the same thing for, not the first tier, the front and then I'll just do the same thing for the back. So let's come over here to my serger. Okay, let me talk about the setup here. So over here on the right-hand side is the differential feed. What this does is that it moves the um, feed dogs at a faster or slower rate, depending on where you're putting it. So I want it to gather. So I'm going to be using, I want my feed dogs to be going at a faster rate than the top is being fed through. So I'm going to um, put this on, okay, all the way up is two, tw two. So that's going twice as fast through. Um, I had it at 1.8 for the last one, and that seemed to be a good amount of gathering because this is pretty, you know, lightweight fabric. So what I'm going to do, and this is my ruffling foot. So you see it's got a little slot here, and the fabric I don't want gathered will go up there, and this is the fabric I do want gathered. This is the um, bottom tier. And keep in mind, if you do have directional fabric, um, what is facing up, this one's not directional, so I can kind of do what I want. But I have these very large selvages, which is perfect because you can go and get it started just a little bit. That is always very helpful. And then, let's see here. We'll do the back first, I guess. So now we've got the back and I'm sewing this onto the first tier. So now I'm just gonna feed this in and you want this right sides together and I'm just feeding this through this little notch here and you do wanna make sure and that you're pushing it really far to the edge of that foot. I'm just gonna get it started. Okay, so now it's just a matter of, I'm writing the uh, strip right at the 3 8 mark, which is just right at the edge of the plate here, and then I'm just pushing the top layer here to the edge just to make sure it gets caught. 
And then you want to go slow because sometimes as it's gathering this bottom layer, it can accidentally get pulled up underneath the foot and then you accidentally stitch where you don't want to be stitching. So then you're just doing this. So we're just going slow, making sure nothing's getting caught where we don't want it to get caught. I don't want any of this ruffle, you know, sneaking up and getting like cut off and then all of a sudden you have a hole in the middle of your dress. But the reason I like this is that I find gathering, especially with these tears, to be so tedious. But also you are sewing and finishing in one fell swoop. And then I will top stitch the seam allowance up layer above it and that will I mean I just like the way that looks and everything lies nice and flat but also um, if you're worried about your stitching lines or anything um, you should be good to go it will secure any oh see how it kind of wants to get under there so you just want to pull that out so it doesn't get sewn on just want to keep your eye on that. So see, I'm coming up on my seam allowance here of these strips that are sewn together. So I'm glad that I had those. All right. Okay. Now I'm just going to sew off that strip. And now what I'm going to do is I'm here. I'll flip it around. Hold on. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my cutting table and I will cut off this little excess piece that's hanging off. And then I will cut off, you know, the really long strip that's over here on the other side. I'll cut it off so that it's straight with the a tear ahead of it. And then I will just use what's left um, to do the same on the tear on the back. But again, put in my sleeves and then sew my side seams up from the hem to the top. Um, then I will hem the dress, then finish off my sleeves, and then we're done. So it's pretty easy. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions on that. If you would like to see this finished dress and how I did the um, darts, you can um, check back on Sunday. I'll have that tutorial up on Sunday, but I'm gonna call it for today on the vlog because again, I need to edit this and get it uploaded. Um, and I would like to get finish this so I can get um, photos in it. So, and you guys will see all of that obviously. Okay, that's all I have. Again, let me know if you have any questions down below and let me know if there are any specific rayon techniques that you would like to see in part two, the part two vlog um, of the rayon video. Okay, alrighty.